AFLNA area. Uh, I see that uh, Dr. Moore has uh, joined us uh, live on Zoom. Dr. Moore, thank you, first of all, for uh, uh, joining us this evening for the briefing. And, and if I can also say on behalf of City Council and our entire community, thank you for your leadership to you and, and your team for all the, the great work uh, that you've been doing uh, in our community fighting the, uh, the fight against COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Moore, the floor is yours. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity to speak with you uh, this evening uh, and through you to our community. I believe Derek's going to handle my slides, so thanks again. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that this is a, a difficult time. This is a stressful time for many. Uh, and uh, I believe as a community, we uh, are working better now together, collaborating, coordinating, uh, communicating uh, with a common goal to reduce the effect of this virus. And I have to celebrate that. I'm truly been humbled by the work that we've done together as a community uh, to limit the spread of this virus. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that I understand that many have made sacrifices uh, economically, socially, uh, to limit the spread of this. Uh, and, and I very much uh, appreciate the sacrifices many in our community are making. And I, I hope uh, that they won't last uh, too long, uh, the sacrifices that many are making. Uh, but we must all remember that we're in this together that each one has a role to play, that we will get through this. Uh, there, there will be bumps along the way. Uh, it, it is a difficult task to fight a new virus that wants to spread so rapidly in our community. Uh, but I, I believe, uh, given what we've gone through in the last several months and, and the great coordination and collaboration uh, that's happened, and how well our community ha has risen to, to the risk of this virus, that, that we will get through this well. Uh, and, and I have data to support that, that I'll present uh, to council uh, this evening. And, uh, and again, thanks very much for the opportunity. So uh, uh, the, the title for this is, is the new normal, uh, and we will have to change uh, how our world works to deal with this virus uh, as it uh, is not leaving us. It's going to want to stay uh, and to come back on a seasonal basis. Uh, and so we have some recommendations on how we can deal with that. So Derek, if you could move to the next slide. My goal today is to review just quickly on the background of what we've done to date uh, and have to celebrate the work uh, that the, the city of Kingston and, and our uh, Lennox and Addington uh, and Frontenac has done uh, to, to, uh, to work with us on this issue, go through some of the timelines. What do we mean by uh, the statement about flattening the curve? talk about a, a chain of protection. And that's basically the role that everyone has to play to limit the, uh, this virus on our community uh, and uh, talk about some of the action we've taken to date and then talk about the future. Um, how as a community can we work through this and get to the other side and how long that may take. So next slide. So just as a, as a reminder, this is a brand new virus to us. Uh, the science is evolving. Uh, our, uh, belief is that this is spread by contact and droplet. It's not spread through the air in general. Uh, and so you must be in close personal contact with someone who would sneeze or cough on you to spread this virus. And, and we've learned that through multiple studies from China, that it is the highest risk is in close personal contact. The commonest symptoms are fever and or cough and or increased difficulty breathing. But at our assessment centers now, we will expand that to include a new sore throat, a new laryngitis, uh, a new cough um, uh, and or sinusitis or, or uh, runny nose, et cetera. So we've expanded the symptoms to be even more inclusive uh, and to test more people. And that's an important message for our community. Generally, it takes uh, around five to seven days for someone to start developing symptoms if, uh, if they've caught the virus. And, and that can be as long as 14 days. And if you get the virus, some people will shed virus before they even develop symptoms. Uh, and on average, people will stop shedding virus around seven to eight days, but we extend it all the way to 14 days to minimize the risk of subsequent spread of virus in the community. And that's public health's job. If we get a positive person with a positive test, we will contact them, we will advise them on a daily basis, and we will follow those individuals up and review what contacts they've had into the community uh, and limit the spread. And that's worked very well to date. 
and, and uh, I got to applaud our public health nurses who have been turned into public health detectives to limit the spread of this virus in our community. Next slide. So uh, we have been planning uh, for pandemics all along. It's uh, a core function of public health. Uh, and just this August uh, of 2019, we had a major meeting of all of our partners, 100 people at KFLNA and our sister health units with our paramedics and our acute care and long-term care partners. So we do have plans in place that we dust off and work through and have implemented for this new COVID virus. Uh, we went into what's called incident management mode, where we uh, respond as an organization to this risk in early in late January, and, and then had educational sessions in March uh, to prime our uh, uh, health system partners on how to respond. Uh, and then uh, on the 26th of March, uh, I got to applaud uh, all of our municipalities in KFLNA declared a state of emergency locally to help support the actions that we needed uh, to protect our community against this virus. Next slide. The chain of protection is really uh, a, a theory that everyone has a role to play uh, in protecting our community. And I, I just have to celebrate all of these organizations, both school boards, colleges, universities, health system partners, multiple levels of government, uh, corrections facilities, uh, those that work with vulnerable uh, and homeless individuals, families, we have partnered to strengthen this chain of protection across KFLNA. Uh, and as a result, I think we are better off in, in, in our response uh, because we've had a comprehensive community-wide approach to this virus. And again, I want to thank all these organizations that we've partnered with. I have to celebrate the work that they've been doing. Uh, the city's uh, done great work, uh, both for vulnerable, for homeless, uh, and, and working with us by allowing us to work at the Memorial Arena, where we provide assessment of patients. It's been a great partnership, uh, and uh, it, I hope and expect it will absolutely continue. The next slide. In terms of flattening the curve, this is a theory. So if you look at this dotted line, that's what numerous areas of the world are experiencing. If you include New York, uh, as many cities in the United States at present, uh, as well as Northern Italy, they had very little control of the epidemic and it basically uh, had a significant health impact on their community with high morbidity and high mortality. We have learned from those areas uh, and our province has enacted the Civil Protection Act, which quietened and dampened and flattened the curve. So what we're seeing in KFLA is we've gone through our first epidemic curve. It peaked on April 5th. We had around 50 patients, mainly those that are repatriating and returning travelers uh, that uh, uh, brought saw, uh, COVID-19 into the community, but because of our combined efforts of our community, it did not propagate significantly. And we went through that very first wave without any significant impact on the healthcare system. Uh, we only had a few patients admitted to the hospital uh, and most did very well at home and re have recovered fully. But it's important that our community understand because we've dampened the wave uh, and we didn't have a significant rise, we will have ongoing small outbreaks uh, that public health will work with our uh, health system partners to minimize the, its impact on our community. This virus will not be eliminated. It will have to be lived with uh, and we'll have to try to get back to some type of normalcy while we control the uh, effect of this virus on our community and limit its effect on the most vulnerable, which are our elderly, those over 70, those in long-term care facilities, those in corrections facilities, those in group homes, et cetera. Uh, so our strategy has worked. We've already been through one wave and I have to tell you and through you to the community that we will go through other waves. It will go in a small undulation and it's our combined uh, responsibility as a community to limit its effect and our community has risen to this occasion. They've done appropriate social distancing, uh, physical distancing, hand washing, staying at home if you're sick, get tested if you have the symptoms consistent with COVID-19. The system has worked locally 
And as a result, we haven't had significant impact on the health system. We haven't inundated our emergency departments like other communities have suffered. Uh, and uh, to date, and I'm knocking on wood, we've had no deaths in our community, which is something we should celebrate today only because we've worked so well together as a community to limit uh, the effect, both on our most vulnerable uh, and in our long-term care facilities to date. Next slide. So I want to draw your attention to our website at kflapublichealth.ca, so kflaph.ca, where we provide transparently our updated data. Uh, and this was as of three o'clock. I'm sorry, it updates at 4.30. We now have 59 cases. Uh, uh, with only five still in the community, 52 or sorry, 54 have completely resolved their symptoms uh, and uh, one person is in hospital uh, and stable at present. And again, we have no deaths in our community. Uh, and, and I have to celebrate that this is only because we've worked together so well, communicating, collaborating and coordinating. Uh, and uh, the last week, we've only seen one or two. So if you can imagine, that is our first wave that's shown to you on this slide. Uh, it's different around us in Toronto and Ottawa. Toronto is going to peak uh, later this month, and Ottawa is uh, still, their numbers are, continue to uh, rise. But we have gone through, effectively, our first wave and are in a recovery phase. Uh, and I just need to let the community know this virus will come back but we will, through our combined efforts, control how it enters uh, and limits its effect. Next slide. Uh, this is just showing you numerous uh, epidemic curves, so incidence of disease over time. Uh, and uh, we've highlighted here in, in gray what, where New York is at, which is at a very high frequency of increase. Uh, Italy now has sun finally uh, peaked in incidence. Uh, Canada was increasing steadily. Uh, and Ontario's epidemic curve uh, is starting to flatten uh, and Kingston flattened uh, roughly two weeks ago uh, and has remained steady state. And it's our goal to continue it as a steady state, uh, uh, low incidence area. Next slide. I also want to thank once again, uh, the uh, city of Kingston for letting us use the Memorial Center where we've been assessing from 80 to uh, 100 patients uh, a day on average, and a high proportion of them have been tested uh, now that uh, we have greater testing capacity. And also that Lennox and Addington Community General Hospital is, has been a great partner in early assessment. And together, I think having early assessment centers has really helped us detect cases early and allowed our nurse detectives to try to limit the spread in our community. Next slide. Because uh, we have enable these assessment centers. Uh, our hospitals have been working diligently to increase their capacity because part of our purpose was to minimize the effect on the acute care sector. So I have to also celebrate Kingston Health Sciences Center has done a remarkable job of increasing the number of beds that are available. Uh, and as of uh, this morning, although the numbers fluctuate, it was around 123. And they've made a great uh, progress increasing the number of ventilators and critical care capacity at Kingston General Hospital. So this community should be aware of the great work that's been done locally, as well as at Lennox and Community General Hospital and Providence Care Hospital. Uh, all these partnerships have worked co cohesively. Providence Care Hospital has made available 174 additional beds if, if they are required. Hotel Dieu is we're working on that site on increasing bed capacity. And so we would have Kingston General Hospital as, as a sort of a hot site where COVID patients are, are assessed and treated uh, and critical care resources are provided. Uh, and then any other additional care can be provided at Providence Care Hospital uh, and a cold site where you provide uh, care to other uh, individuals with other illnesses at the Hotel, hotel Dieu site. And then we're working on also building capacity through the concept of a field hospital. So it's a very important that this work that our community's done to limit the spread has really enabled our health system to prepare and to respond to this new threat. Uh, this work has been done diligently and thoroughly, and I'm very impressed uh, with the work 
uh, led by Dr. Bacora at the Kingston General Hospital and Kathy Zabo at uh, Providence Care Hospital. It's been remarkable progress uh, on making that increased bed capacity where we were full to the rafters prior to this occurring and, and now uh, they've, they've enabled this so that our patients in our community can be provided the right care at the right place at the right time if needed. But at present, as we've said, we've done a great job at limiting the spread of this virus in our community. Next slide. I also want to celebrate, and this is, these are good news stories, our paramedics, both in Lenox and Addington and Frontenac. Uh, we've partnered with them so that they can uh, do swabbing uh, at someone's home if required. And we're encouraging them to apply for funding for community paramedicine work. Uh, and paramedics have worked at our assessment center with us uh, to seamlessly provide care to individuals uh, and to help us with transfer or, or transport if and when required. Uh, and they've been great partners as well. Next slide. Our long-term care and retirement homes, again, uh, have been a priority from us uh, from the start. Uh, we have at KFLA Public Health assigned a public health inspector as well as a public health nurse now to each facility so that we can support them for infection prevention and control for outbreak management uh, and to give them guidance on care of any patients that are diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, and uh, I have to celebrate that our teams work very early uh, and that we've had only uh, two outbreaks to date, one in a, in a healthcare worker and our uh, one case in one patient uh, who's currently receiving care, and we've not seen any propagation outside uh, due to our combined efforts uh, working with uh, Kingston Health Sciences, Providence Care Hospital, uh, and our long-term care partners. Uh, so that's a remarkable uh, position that we are in uh, to be able to celebrate how limited the spread has been in those institutions which are vulnerable. Next slide. The story across the province, though, is different. Uh, as you see in the blue line, these are the cumulative number of cases of residents in long-term care facilities across uh, uh, Ontario, the cumulative number of staff that have tested positive, and sadly, uh, the number of deaths that occurred in long-term care facilities. It remains a high vulnerable area for us. We and KFLNA and across the health system are working diligently to continue to, uh, to protect the, that vulnerable population uh, and we will be continuing to do that day in day out you have our assurance uh, again I'm, I'm, I'm struck and humbled by how well we are we are working together uh, to protect the, these populations next slide uh, we are also working at, at correction services so uh, we uh, in KFLNA have over 2,000 inmates in the federal corrections facilities uh, and over 200 in our provincial facility in Quinty at Na in Napanee. So we've been partnering with them to provide the same uh, resources of infection prevention control and outbreak management, uh, surveillance uh, and testing uh, of individuals within their jurisdiction. And, and that partnership uh, has been successful. We've had, uh, and I'm knocking on wood, uh, no outbreaks in these facilities, uh, and yet there are numerous outbreaks across the country. So uh, again, uh, have to salute uh, the work that's been done to date and the partnerships that have been established. Next slide. Uh, planning ahead, uh, clearly the only way we can reduce the impact of this virus is either we, we acquire immunity through having been infected, uh, and that's not the best means of acquiring immunity. Uh, that would take around 70% of our population on, on average would have to get a natural acquired immunity to this infection to limit its spread. So 140,000 of us in KFLNA, uh, that's not an option. Uh, and so we are anticipating uh, having the production of a vaccine, but that is still uh, eight, six, 12 to 18 months away. Uh, and clearly from a public health vantage point, we wouldn't endorse a vaccine until we knew with certainty that it was safe and that it was effective. And it would have to meet our standards, our very high standards for vaccines to be given uh, across uh, uh, to a population. So we, we will continue to uh, monitor the effectiveness of vaccines uh, and their creation uh, and their research and their publications, uh, but this is still a long ways away. 
So we have a journey together as a community to make over the next 12 to 18 months where we're going to have to be vigilant. We're going to have to continue to work so well together uh, to protect uh, the virus entering uh, into our community. Next slide. The, the new normal will be the maintenance of physical distancing, social distancing, hand wash, uh, hand hygiene, staying at home if you're sick, getting tested for COVID if you develop any respiratory illness with any symptoms. That's going to be our new normal and potentially uh, wearing a mask in public if we can't maintain physical distancing. That will have to continue for the next 12, 18, 24 months uh, until such time we get an adequate treatment uh, and or an immunization. The WHO has created criteria and these have been validated by the Public Health Ontario Public Health Agency of Canada and the CDC uh, as criteria by which we can start transitioning and opening up our economy in a phased, reasonable, prudent, and slow manner. I would point to you that it's my belief in, in KFLNA that the transmission has been controlled to date. We have been through our first wave. We haven't had any significant rise. We've uh, been able to use public health measures to limit its impact in our community. Uh, on point number two, and the health system has significant capacity, we still need personal protective equipment. We only have a week supply locally uh, and across Ontario. So that basic uh, equipment still needs to be improved. Uh, and we also need better access to testing. We have uh, maybe a week or two supply for adequate testing, but we could potentially run out of some of the components for testing. So personal protective equipment, uh, testing capacity and treatment capacity are still issues because we've heard from our critical care uh, experts that they may not have all the medications they need if we get a sudden ramp up in, in need for critical care resources. We, on point number three, I think we've worked very well together in protecting our long-term care uh, patients. Uh, and those in vulnerable settings in, uh, in our corrections facilities uh, and in our shelters. Uh, and if for point number four, we still need, if industri industries are going to return, uh, to work with them to create preventive measures to present, prevent spread in their settings. Uh, and point number five is about imported cases. So our, our borders will have to remain closed for a prolonged period of time uh, if we're going to limit international spread. Certainly, uh, the Americans uh, in the United States have a much higher incidence than we have right now uh, and uh, are, have much higher percent positivity in all of their tests uh, and a high impact on their health system right now. So that protection will have to remain in place. And I think six is very important that we engage our communities, understand uh, uh, the role that they have to play uh, on protecting uh, and adhering to those social and, and uh, physical distancing rules. Uh, and understand from them uh, how we get back uh, to our social and economic life. Uh, but again, that has to be in a phased, reasonable, prudent, controlled manner. And we're not there yet from a health systems vantage point. Next slide. So, uh, oh, I mentioned these issues already in terms of recovery plan, we have to deal with these health system issues and, and we hope uh, that uh, the supply related to these components will improve over the next uh, several weeks to month. The next slide. So my key messages are that as a community, uh, this again, this virus isn't going away, but wanna thank the community for having been so diligent and adhering to social and physical distancing. We should continue uh, to stay at home uh, unless you have other uh, important issues to do, to go shopping, et cetera, especially if you're uh, over 70. Continue our good hand hygiene, our physical distancing. We must be very sensitive to vulnerable members of our community uh, and continue to include them in our chain of protection uh, and that we must continue to be vigilant to protect our community against this aggressive uh, virus. Uh, we will get through this. We have done a remarkable job to date uh, as a community. I have to applaud everyone's efforts to limit the spread of this virus. And we will come out the other side of this stronger, uh, but I just can't tell you when. Uh, and again, want to thank Council for the opportunity to speak with you today, and I'm happy to take any questions.